Hi guys, in this video I am going to show you an issue your vehicle's starter can come up with at any point of its life. Now this video I shot I know is shaky and blurry but I am sharing it as it supports the explanation. I hope the animation can lighten the issues you see with the shooting. I had to shoot while working and I had no stabilizer so uh, that's the story behind this uh, shakiness and uh, blurriness. This is a Bosch starter from my 1993 BMW E34. All the starters work the same so these instructions should apply to any brand out there. This particular issue was with the starter solenoid. It is basically an electromagnet mounted on a starter motor and operates a relay switch and a lever mechanism to position motor spin iron in line with ring gear of the engine. A starter solenoid normally has four connectors at the back. Two of these are heavy connectors of a relay switch located at the back inside of the solenoid. When you start the car, you energize the solenoid and it closes this switch relaying a heavy load through starter motor. The switch is essentially a push button type switch a hammer attached to a lever mechanism slams on the switch to close it. Turning on ignition key, you energize the electromagnet and it drives this hammer to push this switch. The starter motor is now relayed a high current and it spins rotating the engine's ring gear as the hammer mechanism also pushes forward the motor pin iron at the same time. If I list down the problems associated with my car, when I switched on the ignition to crank, I could hear solenoid working but nothing happened. I checked all the fuses and verified that the starter was getting a good supply. I bridged two big terminals on starter solenoid with a metal piece and the motor spin. That means the motor was doing ok. This helped me isolate the culprit, the solenoid. I first thought that the lever mechanism was worn or something but I found it was ok. Then I thought uh, maybe the electromagnet wasn't powerful enough to push the switch. It is both unlikely and possible to be true considering the age of the car. While the doubt on the coils was still in mind, I decided I should have a look at the solenoid switch. I had a bit of suspicion that the contacts might have either worn out or not contacting properly due to dirt buildup. Actually replacing the old with the brand new solenoid is an option most people would resort to. But I wanted to find out if this was repairable at much lesser or zero cost eBay sells these both brand new and used at various prices. This is the exact solenoid that I am restoring here. Actually, this particular solenoid was not built for repairing but for replacing. There were no screws to remove the back cover. The metal housing was bent over the plastic cover at perimeter. I removed lead soldering on coil leaves so I could take the cover off without damaging them. And yes, it took me some considerable effort to undo the lock.
I opened the solenoid like this. This is the electromagnet with four coil leads. I had to undo the lock all the way along perimeter using a flat screwdriver. At left is our culprit, the solenoid switch. Be careful with the coil leads. Here, I accidentally broke this lead that gets negative supply from housing. If you somehow get any of this damaged, make sure to solder before fitting everything back in. After opening, I noticed heavily worn contacts of the switch. Here you can see the gravity of years of beating. Contacts have carved into each other. This is the reason behind starter failure. When the contact is not strong, the starter doesn't get enough or no battery power to crank the engine. The nut heads worn flat almost complete. Let me show you how the switch is working. Let's put these pieces together and push it down vertically. We can have a look at the animation to get a better idea. After opening, I noticed heavily worn contacts of the switch. Both nut heads were worn and their heights were obviously reduced. Copper plate heating on them too was a bit worn but okay to keep. So I figured that the copper plate was not bridging two nut heads because they were not of the correct height due to excessive wear and tear. Now, I didn't have new nuts to replace so the solution was to increase existing nut height. You have to be cautious not to increase excessively as it can turn on water prematurely leading to gear grinding between pinion and ring gear. Height increase of 1 to 2 mm should solve the problem. So how can you increase the height? I first tried to fill contact points on heads with melted lead and fitted everything back in. Car started fine several times but again motor stopped cranking. Opened up again to find all the lead soldering to be flat and peeled off. Next I got this idea on lasting solution to add some good metal wiring around the neck of each nut. Metal wire diameter should be about 1 to 2 millimeters. Once placed around the neck, the nut head will raise by 1 to 2 mm as ring creates a gap between nut head bottom and the plastic housing. You can also use a thick washer if you can find one, but a ring made with 
1 to 2 mm metal wire is an easy option. After this, now the starter working like a new one. So this repair cost me no money at all. The idea here is, sometimes you can find easy solutions to your problems if you yourself dig into them. That's it for now. Leave your comments and concerns below. I will reply each and every one of them. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Like and share to support if you are happy with the tip. And thank you.